Hi friends, I am Lalit Vasist and you are watching Engineering Made Easy. In this video, we will discuss the basic block diagram of a traditional computer. Here we will also discuss the block diagram of a microprocessor when the microprocessor is used instead of CPU. Here uh, we are using the microprocessor as a CPU. After this, I will explain you the block diagram of a microcontroller. So here we will see what is the basic conceptual difference between a traditional computer, a microprocessor and a microcontroller. So in this video, we will see the block diagram of all these three, the traditional computer, microprocessor and microcontroller. So keep watching it till the end. So first start with the block diagram of a traditional computer. Here you can see it has mainly three components. This is the central processing unit known as a CPU in short. This is the memory, input and output devices. And thus the central processing unit CPU contains two uh, components inside it known as arithmetic logic unit ALU in short and the control unit. Now we will discuss each of these uh, components in some detail and after that we will see the block diagrams of microprocessor and microcontroller and we will see the comparison between these all three. Okay, so let's first start with the input block. So what are input devices? Input devices examples are uh, the keyboard, mouse, etc. The purpose of these input devices is to get the input that is uh, the instructions or data from the user or you can say from the outside world so that they can process that data or the, uh, they can follow these instructions so they receive the instructions and data through these input devices like keyboards and mouse and they are either processed or uh, they are processed in the central processing unit or they are stored for further processing and what are output devices we know that uh, the examples of output devices are printers and uh, visual display unit the VDU and the purpose of this is to uh, show the output or we can say the results of the processing to the user they convert the data so that they can easily be understood or seen by the user or we can they can uh, help they help in uh, connecting the outside world with the results of the computer so the computer processes the data that is inputted uh, by the input devices and follows the instructions as uh, specified by the user and then the output is produced and this result or the output is shown to the user or given to the user using the output devices such as uh, printers we can print that output if we want the hard copy of it and also we can see it on the visual display unit on our screens so this is the output device now let's discuss the third component of this uh, traditional computer the memory memory the purpose of memory is to store the data that can be used by the cpu for processing since we uh, first we get the input uh, from the user in the form of instructions or the data and it pro either we can store it for further uh, for later processing or we can uh, store the results after processing in the memory and then that uh, can be processed uh, further also by the computer so the purpose of this is to store the data okay so the memory uh, can be of two types primary or secondary the primary memory is the memory that uh, is used uh, while processing the data it uh, stores the program that are under execution while the secondary memory the purpose of secondary memory is uh, to store the data for later processings so the primary memory is the random access memory and uh, this is a volatile memory when we switch off the power of the computer it goes it, it vanishes while the secondary memory is uh, a permanent kind of memory like hard disks and floppy disks some other um, differences between primary memory and the secondary memory are that this primary memory is a very fast memory in comparison to the secondary memory but it is very expensive in comparison to the secondary memory so our computers or mobiles have a limited amount of uh, primary memory it is a volatile memory okay volatile means the data vanishes when the power is turned off now let's uh, discuss the central processing unit this is the main uh, 
unit that we can uh, see we can say that it is the brain of the computer all the processings uh, and all the calculations uh, are performed in this cpus that's why it is known as therefore it is known as central processing unit it has two components the arithmetic logic unit we call it alu in short and the control unit the arithmetic logic unit as it is clear by the name itself that it performs all the arithmetic operations and the logic operations arithmetic operations means uh, uh, multiplication division addition subtraction etc and logical operations like there are various logical operations like uh, and or nand nor etc all these are performed in the this alu now we will see what is the role of control unit the control unit uh, is very important part of the computer this is the central unit because it it controls everything it controls other units of this uh, uh, computer it um, synchronizes and controls everything the uh, processing of data how to manage the data and how to transfer the data to how to control and how to send the data from one uh, unit to another it is all controlled and synchronized by this control unit so the the function of control unit is how to where to store the data that is received from the input device and how to send this input um, data to the memory and how to transfer the data between the memory and alu when uh, if you wanted to process the data how it is how it goes to the alu and how the output goes to the memory it performs all the transfer functions it controls everything controls all the units of the computer and how to and when to send the data to the output device so it controls everything like when to receive and when to send the output and how to send and receive how to uh, send the data for processing and how to receive the data from the alu to the memory how to store when to store and where to store the data so this is the central unit the control unit so these are the basic building blocks of the traditional computer now let's come to the microprocessor here we are using the block diagram this is the block diagram we are at the place of cpu previous diagram it was a cpu at this place and it had a two components arithmetic and logic units and the control unit so this cpu has been replaced by a single chip so as the technology advanced we could uh, replace all the components of a cpu on a single chip so this chip is the microprocessor and this is known as the microprocessing unit mpu also in short and uh, this is a whole uh, cpu on a single chip initially when the technologies were not so advanced we used uh, discrete components like alu and control unit and then associate them but instead of this now we are able to put a whole cpu on a single chip so this is a microprocessor unit this is a microprocessor and it acts as a cpu here other components like input output and memory are uh, not included on this chip so they are associated they are linked to this uh, externally so when we use uh, the microprocessor as a cpu then we call this computer system as a microcomputer that was the traditional computer and this is the microcomputer so there is no basic difference the the functions of input output memory are already explained uh, in the previous section now the basic difference here is that we are using this microprocessor as a cpu here on a single chip now the next stage comes of microcontrollers these are more advanced in comparison to microcomputers microcomputers was the previous section that we used which used cpu which used microprocessor as a cpu now this is the microcontroller and uh, we we discussed uh, uh, earlier that uh, the cpu was replaced by the microprocessor but the memory and input output were uh, separate segments but in case of microcontrollers not only the cpu but also the memory and input output are placed on the single chip on a single chip here we have the cpu and the memory input output and and along with this we have other uh, peripheral devices like serial input output analog to digital converter timer etc so all these are placed on a single chip this is a microcontroller this is a complete computer on a single chip 
this has been uh, possible because of the technical advances and uh, VLSI technologies as we are able to place more and more components on a single chip so this is the microcontroller so the basic differences are now clear that in traditional computer we had the different uh, components for CPU and memory and input outputs were also were uh, added uh, separately while in case of microprocessor we used the CPU as a, on a single chip and while the memory and input outputs were separate but now on the microcontrollers they are so advanced that the memory and input output CPU along with other peripheral devices like serial input output and to digital converter and timer etc they all are placed on a single chip so this is the basic difference between all these three hope you got the point and in the next videos we will uh, discuss uh, all of these things in very details so keep watching my channel engineering made easy and if you liked it uh, don't forget to subscribe my channel and click on the like button see you soon in the next video till then bye bye thanks for watching friends for more such videos you can uh, subscribe my channel engineering made easy and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can visit my blog see you soon in the next video till then bye bye